The data channel lets you extract and manipulate information based on your 3D model, for example curvature. So this allows us to apply procedural effects like worn edges based on the shape of our model. So I've made a box and it's got plenty of segments and it's got a small chamfer on it. And now I'm going to apply our data channel in here. You've got inputs and outputs. So input is going to be curvature and then the output is going to be vertex output and this flows downward. So you can put enable on to see what's happening. You're likely going to have this on position. So put it on vertex color and then X, Y, Z corresponds to red, green and blue. So we're going to use red. And if we go back to curvature here, we can change the scale. So I'm going to turn it up to three. And we don't want anything on the concave and we just want to see it on the convex. And if I turn off the wireframe, you can see what this is doing. So if I turn up the scale, you can see it's getting more or less. So now if we run an interactive render, you can see that we just have a white box with a wood material on it. So let's open up our material editor. And this is the material. And we're going to create a map general and it will be a vertex color. And then in here, we want to just make sure that this is on red and we're going to plug that into the mix amount. And in here you can see we've got the white wood and we've also got the base wood that we want to show. Um, I've got use curve on and these are the upper and lower amounts. And then if we plug this into the diffuse, we can now see we've now got edge distress on here and we can use the scale to change how this is affecting our model. All right, next up, delete mesh. So if we add the delete mesh, you can see everything gets deleted. Um, why use this is because it's layered, so it's non-destructive. So if I go back, it's still there. And what I can do is select, say we wanna get rid of this table and it's deleted. And the reason to do this as well is it can be used with the attribute holder. It's non-destructive, so I can always go back and let's just get rid of this section, for example. And that is how delete mesh works. Delete patch. So if you're using an editable patch like we are here, you can add a delete patch and it's going to work the same as the delete mesh, but this time we're using a patch. So if we want to take the top off of the teapot, um, this is non-destructive again, so we can always change our selection. Displacement of prox lets us displace maps to add height information from a texture to geometry. So I have a black and white map plugged into a displacement. And note that I'm using Scanline here as V-Ray and Corona both have their own native displacement systems. And when I hit render, you'll see that we have added displacement. And also note this only shows at render time. Displace will displace geometry based on the map. So if we plug our map into the map slot in the displace and we turn up the strength, we can see that this is actually affecting our geometry. So you need plenty of polys in here for this to work well. Um, this can be great for terrain and fabric wrinkles. And again, V-Ray and Corona do have their own native displacement systems. The edit mesh modifier lets you work directly with the basic components of a mesh, so vertices, edges, and faces. You can select individual verts and move them around. You can do the same with edges to alter the box's geometry, and you can also extrude and bevel faces. So edit mesh gives us quick and easy control over the model's shape. So this is a simple yet very powerful modifier. Edit normals allow you to control the way that light interacts with the surface. So in the edit normal, these lines show the direction of the light. So if we unify it, the cube now looks smoother. So this can be an easy way to smooth an object without adding a lot of polys. And this can also be useful for merging objects together. For example, this grass plane, if you take a look in the render, you can see it very much looks like a plane on another plane. But by editing the two normals at the bottom, you can see that we are now starting to blend the reflections and it's much smoother. All right, edit patch. So these are cool if you are um, working with patches. So if we select the element and we extrude this a little bit, and then we'll go to handles and in the front view, I'll just select all these top faces and back to perspective. And now I can just pull these up and you can see 
that this is a really cool way to model and you can always add an edit poly on top of this and we're going to look at edit poly next all right edit poly this is my most used uh, modifier and it's essential for editing your models so we get selection sets so we've got verts edges borders polygons and elements and you can access these by pressing one two three four or five on your keyboard and notice different selections have access to different tools so we've got bevel here but if we go to the edges we've got access to chamfer and a neat way to make selections is if we select this vert in the middle and let's turn on wireframe if you hold control you can then select all adjacent faces and this works for anything so still holding control I've now selected all of these edges and here we've got access to tools like bevel so if we say we wanted to put a little um, dip in this countertop that is how easy it is and and again if I want to make that selection we can use grow to select more faces and we can change all of the smoothing groups to one and you'll notice that this now looks like a smooth face if I undo that you can see what it looked like before we've also got super powerful tools in here like soft selection which is more for like organic modeling but I'll show you what this does really handy for yeah more soft furnishings we can also attach other objects so we can attach this model over here and then it's going to become part of this and we'll be able to select that as an element let's turn off use safe soft use soft selection uh, and now we can select individual objects but this is all one object let's uh, detach this here so super powerful with edit poly we can easily refine models like this and adjust details adjust geometry and also create non-destructive edits up next we have face extrude and as you might have guessed this allows us to extrude a face along its normal um, so we've got the amount and we've also got access to scale here FFDs so there are a lot of them so I'll just run through them all here so FFD stands for freeform deformation and what this allows us to do if we press one with it selected or you can always um, use the drop down arrow and select control points this lets us move things based on the lattice on the outside so this can be really handy I really like using this for like trying to get sofas in to the right place without having to like remodel them or scale them so they come in different sizes so you've got four by four so obviously you can get a little bit more detailed here um, so maybe we just want to move the top ones down or up or perhaps it's more just like the middle ones need scaling but this can be a real nice way to update a model um, you can always animate that would be cool um, to update a model just using the freeform deformation um, box is going to let us make a custom box and you can see it's going to change the size so maybe we only wanted to edit one of these points I, I actually use this more than you think with modelings especially when you like download some from the internet um, and then we've also got the cylind cylinder one um, which obviously isn't going to work great on this model but you get the idea up next the flex modifier so this is a really cool modifier I'll just turn it off and I'll press play and you can see I've keyframed our box moving so we're going from here to here with the keyframes kind of a cool movement but when we add flex what this does is simulate soft body dynamics so it uses virtual springs between the objects verts so if we turn this on we can see that it actually gives it a bit more spring and we can actually change the flex amount so if we pump this up to 10 we're going to see some big changes and you can see that that's really uh, flapping around and we've also got the strength in here which sets the overall spring strength and then we've got the sway which sets the time for the object to come to rest 